Nowadays, I'm like, check it out. Hi, I'm Christy Walker, and today I'm gonna tell you what it's like to live with an adult congenital heart defect. Do you feel like you have an invisible disease? Uh, definitely, because when you look at me, you would never know, unless you saw this like giant scar on my chest, you would honestly never know that anything was wrong with me. So if I never need to take a break, or I can't go through the metal detector at the courthouse, it's because I have a pacemaker. People expect things of you sometimes that you're not able to give just because you don't look sick all the time. How did your parents explain your condition to you? They didn't. They spoke for me. Growing up, I didn't know anything about my condition. I just would tell people I have half a heart um, because I relied so much on them and they were amazing parents and did so much for me. Went to every single appointment, they were on top of it. So it wasn't until later in life that my doctor actually drew out a very descriptive diagram on what my heart looked like that I really knew much about my heart condition at all. Do you blame your parents for your condition? Not at all. There's not a thing that my parents could have done to make me a healthy baby, to have me any differently. Do they blame themselves? Yes. They constantly think of what they could have done differently. Did they take a medication? Did they live near, you know, power lines? There are so many things that my parents take into account that I, I don't want them to feel. Does it hurt? The surgeries hurt, the procedures hurt, um, the emotional toll that it takes hurts physically right now. I don't feel any pain, um, but throughout my life, it's definitely caused emotional issues and trauma uh, that does affect me on a daily basis. What brought you to UC San Diego Health? Uh, so I was still at the, the pediatric hospital when I had gone through some fertility things, found out I had a fluid in my pelvis that could be unexplained, that was unexplained, and I went to my pediatric cardiologist and said, something's wrong with my liver. And that's how I ended up at UC San Diego Health. They, uh, they took me seriously. I met Dr. Lath who, and Dr. Vodkin, who's my liver specialist, and they did more testing and found out that I actually had severe cirrhosis of the liver, or I think they call it nutmeg liver. That sounds cute. Uh, and I had nutmeg liver, and I needed to do something seriously in, in a short amount of time because it was not looking good. And so that's why I was brought here, because UC San Diego, for me, is the future of my condition. Dr. Lath is incredible, and uh, he gave me a lot of hope that I would be able to live an adult life and that I would be able to uh, get old, and I never had that hope before. Tell us about milestones on your CHD journey. I would say everything that people think is normal is a milestone for me. Um, getting married, huge milestone, because if you think about what essentially someone is signing up for when they marry someone with an unknown future, um, that's, that's tough. Are you able to give birth to a child? Technically, yes. Would it be wise? Absolutely not. And I went through every measure with my doctors to check before I took that step. Um, but then I had the liver problem and my doctors told me that it would not be wise. They did not recommend it. I want a family to grow and live with my family and enjoy my family for a long time. And it's just not worth it to me to risk shortening my life at any cost. So this is a picture of me and a two week premature cow that was born that day, the day that I met it. For some reason, I, my parents can't tell me an explanation as to why I loved cows, but every hospital visit, my mom got me a cow stuffed animal. Then later in my life, I found out I had some uh, more severe medical conditions that caused me to need a cow valve in my heart. Well, let's slow down. 
a pig or a cowbell, they would find out when they got in there. Needless to say, the cows pulled through for me and I came out of the surgery with a cow valve. When that happened, it was also my 30th year of life. And on my 30th birthday, November 2nd, I decided to meet a cow. This, <laughs> the question is, can you use a microwave? And this is like one of the, I guess this is a misconception against people that have pacemakers. They assume I can't use a microwave. I don't, yes. Yes, I can use a microwave. I probably use it far too often too. After all of your surgeries, what does the future hold? That'd be awesome if you guys could tell me because I honestly don't know. Uh, I'm a guinea pig. I'm the first kind of of my kind to make it this far. One in 100 kids are born uh, every year with a CHD not many of them get to make it to 32. So it's actually pretty special that I'm here, but it means I have a lot of work to do because there's a lot of people coming behind me that I need to live for. Um, so the future for me, it look, uh, definitely more surgeries. We will have pacemaker changes. I'm sure I will need um, a pulmonary valve replacement again because they don't last forever. At some point I might need a heart and liver transplant that's also been in talks. Uh, so, but there's a lot of unknowns. It's scary because I don't know what my life holds at all. Even tomorrow could be different. Has your scar caused you to have body image issues? My gosh, yes. My scar looks pretty amazing today. I've had a lot of plastic surgery done on it to make it this way. But before I had what was called a keloid scar and everyone scars differently, but I, formed a keloid, which means that the cells don't know when to stop scarring. So they just build up on each other until you have this very thick, very red inflamed scar. And that's what my open heart surgery scar looked like from here all the way down to here. It was painful. It was itchy. Um, it caused a lot of emotional pain. I was so self-conscious of it. I felt like this is a very feminine part, you know, of a woman's body. And I felt like less of a woman because I have this scar and it was really hard to want to be normal when literally the thing that made you so abnormal was staring everyone in the face. I would say the root of my body image issues started with my scar, started at a very young age. And so many people, anyone that I did show would be like, that's your badge of honor. You're a warrior. You should wear it proudly. To all those people, I said, you try. I walked around showing my scar for 12 years of my life. And then after that, I couldn't do it anymore. Nowadays, I'm like, check it out. If you could tell your 12 year old self anything, what would it be? So I would tell 12 year old Christy, there is so much hope. Your life is going to freaking rock. You're going to be so cool. And everything that happens from here on or happened in the past is in the past. You're going to be happy, even though you might not feel it. And your differences are going to make you unique and are going to help other people. So keep fighting.